Welcome guys. Um, seems to be a lot more stable now. Um, I hope. As you can see, I have something in my eye here. Um, yeah, seems to have uh, stabilized a little bit, which is good. Maybe a few drop frames here and there. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we're celebrating one year of Tablemon. Um, almost exactly a year ago, I started out as a full-time Pokemon player and it's been quite the road, definitely. Quite, quite the road. But um, pretty happy with everything, um, thanks to you guys, that I'm able to do what I'm doing right now in my life. And so just couple of codes for you guys shining legends and burning shadows I have all the codes right here um, mixed and matched um, you know there's crimson invasion shining legends and burning shadows um, I don't think I have ultra prism codes for you guys today um, I hope that's okay so yeah so the early birds there's a couple of codes um, we have a bunch more to potentially give out um, throughout the week most likely um, you, you guys will just need to remind me uh, to give out the codes because I get very into the games and then I forget sometimes uh, but yeah um, custom is that didn't go well for us um, I played Drumba Garb which is a deck that won uh, it wasn't a bad decision um, I just in theory I played that because I expected to play a lot of Zorg and I would beat them and then I lost. I played against Zorak twice, and then I lost twice against them. Um, always like one card away from winning, or an energy away from closing out the game, um, or a tool card away from shutting off abilities and locking my opponent out of the game, but I kept on whiffing, and my opponent kept on drawing field lore. <laughs> and so they're one field lore um, at the right time. So nothing I could do there, um, but yeah. Today we're gonna be doing standard. Uh, we're gonna be doing standard uh, standard decks. We're gonna start preparing for Portland and Charlotte now, and I know most of the League Cups are standard as well. So we're gonna be doing um, a few special, uh, well not special, a few fun decks. Um, we're gonna be doing Meow Stick spread. We're gonna be doing um, Zorg Gardevoir, which I've meant to do for a long time now and I haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, we're gonna check out Sylvian, we're gonna check out Quad Koopa, Quad Aggressive Koopa, and then I forget what the other deck was. And hello Max Rock, thanks so much for being here. And yeah, so that's the plan for today. So let's jump into that, shall we? Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new day of Road to TCG Worlds 2018. Thank you so much for being here and today we are going to be taking a look uh, we are going to be taking a look at a deck created by Grant Manley. Um, he's been uh, quite uh, known for these like weird um, out of the norm decks that try to counter the metagame and this is one of them. Um, it's a spreading deck which I definitely have always been a huge fan of just because I don't know that strategy seems appealing to me and this deck has a lot of elements of um, a lot of elements of damage spread and then a lot of strategy and it also doesn't run a single Guzma which is very very interesting. So the deck revolves around Tapu Koko promo using flying flip to spread a lot of damage uh, to our opponent's Pokemon hopefully since turn one. Then we are also using Necrozma GX and its Black Ray GX attack in order to spread damage around um, up to 100 or rather 100 to all of the GXs and EXs that are out there. And then we have the 3-2-2 Garbodor line. Um, we have the Garbotoxin Garb to slow down our opponents and then we also have the Treasure Lunch Garb to punish opponents for using up their items early on or late game in the game to close out a match especially with all the spreading um, every turn Tapu Gogo spreads it's one less item card that Trash Challenge needs to get a knockout on a Pokemon 
Um, finally, we have a Drumpa because we do have Pot Down, we have access to Berserk, self damage, we also have Righteous Edge to control what our opponent does as well, which is pretty nice to buy us some time by removing special energy. And then we have the 1 1 Meow Stick. Now, Meow Stick has the infamous attack which allows you to rearrange damage counters. Um, ideally, we would have that on a basic uh, Tapu Lele promo, but we have it on a stage 1 Meow Stick. The attack is your influence, and you get to move as many damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon as you like to any of your opponent's other Pokemon in any way you like. Um, maybe the chat is not working today properly for me. Um, so yeah, that's the whole idea behind the deck. You have either Aggression with Trash Challenge and Berserk, you have Spreading with Coco, Necrozma and Meowstic, and you also have Devolution with Espion EX, which is really, really nice. So you can set up the damage with Meowstic, then devolve with Espion. You have a lot of ways where, where you can finish off a game. So yeah, looking pretty good. And then for supporters, we have 4 Sycamore, 4 N, and 4 Cynthia. So 12 draw supporters, potentially really healthy amount um no guzma so we're not gonna have any sort of manipulation on what is active and what isn't i actually wouldn't mind a couple of counter catcher in this deck um at least one i would say just because your idea is to spread 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 as much as possible um joe bro hello thanks so much <laughs> thanks so much for the congrats and Swaggenator5000, hello, thanks so much for being here. Um, guys, if you wrote anything in the chat in the past five minutes, I didn't get the message, I just refreshed the page, so um, if you want to type anything or just say hello, I'll say hello back. Um, okay, then for item cards, we have the 4 Ultra Ball, and then we have 3 Pot Down, 3 Choice Band, 3 Fine Fury Belt, and 4 Float Stone, so a total of 10 tool cards which means our item, our ability lock will most likely be on uh, most of the time. Uh, then we also have one stretcher and one supra to make sure we have the right attacker going and some energy refreshment. And then finally we have four double colorless energy and seven psychic energy for attacking. So let's jump into the ladder and see how well we can do with this uh, Meowstic spread deck. And you can see the lineup for today. It's gonna be standard Hoopa, um, Metal Garbodor, Meowstic spread, standard Sylveon, and then um, Zoark Sylveon, I mean Zoark Gardevoir as well. Um, so that's what's gonna be happening today. Uh, we're gonna start off with Meowstic. I, I realized I wrote Meowstic, <laughs> very wrong there. And we'll see how this goes. We shall see. So thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate it. Um, apologize in advance for any drop frames, any stuttering that you get on the stream. Um, we're having a GoFundMe to try and recoup some uh, some of the costs of the computer um, that I need to buy in order to improve the streams, improve the quality of the channel as well. And it seems like we're up against a pure Psychic deck. So this could be um, Espion Garb. This could be Quad Wolf Ed as well, um, which we should have a very good matchup against. Um, and is this Zora Gardevoir basically just Torch List? It is indeed. Um, nothing special about it, I just added one Cynthia into the list. Uh, but yeah, nothing spicy or nothing new. Um, in that list in particular. The spicy decks, I guess, are the the other ones, or the out-of-the-norm decks, I would say. Okay, so we start double Trubbish, and we get an Ultra Wall. So the Ultra Wall can find us Bridget, potentially, so that we can start spreading. Um... It is a quad wolf attack. So that's annoying to deal with. That is gonna be very annoying to deal with. Wait, what? Oh, never mind. Oh, I'm playing expanded. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am actually in the expanded ladder. My bad. I did that the other day as well. It's just because I was I was preparing for Costa Mesa. <laughs> uh -huh. I definitely do not wanna play my spread deck in the expanded ladder. But last time around, um, in the Spanish stream, we started off with, by mistake, I 
I started playing against an expanded deck with my Espion Garbodor from Standard and we still won against Zorg. Okay, now we get to go first, which is really cool. Um, unfortunately, our hand is actually awful. We have two turns to top deck out of this, um, unless we're up against a fighting puzzle deck. There's no, there shouldn't be any chance for our Coco to go down on turn one, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, but we're up against Guard Chump. So the spreading strategy will actually not be too good against Guard Chump. Uh, Potone is nice. But that was a super, super weak turn one. That was actually a very weak turn one. Okay, there's the Ultra Ball. Streamlabs. So yeah guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you guys are quiet in the chat or maybe it's not working properly. But thank you, thank you so much. Huh. The cheers sent by the white snake are not showing up. Weird. Okay. So if you get any really bad stuttering, guys, please, please, please let me know. Please let me know. Okay, we see Lele for Bridget for my opponent. There is Ikebol, Riolu, and Fulpix. Just quiet, okay. <laughs> That's cool. And there's a double Gabite. Okay. So Potown should theoretically be really good here against my opponent. And now, also attach energy to a Trubbish. And now we get a turn of Flying Flip, which is really nice. And then if my opponent evolves through Potown, that's also pretty cool. Should be really, really good for us. Okay. Ooh, we see. We saw double puzzle immediately. Okay, Potown just being really, really effective right now. It's really, really cool. We're gonna see a Cynthia, and there should be no chance of Coco going down this turn. It probably goes down next turn though. Probably slash definitely goes down next turn, because if my opponent sets up the guard chumps, he will have access to um, searching with Lucario. <laughs> oh, it's your birthday, the white snake. Happy birthday, congratulations. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> That's so cool. What, what are you planning on doing for your birthday? And thank you so much for the cheers. You're so nice. So, so kind of you. Um, okay, so we get another turn of spreading. We also got the Coco, which is nice. We're really just not drawing much else. And my opponent has three item cards. So... If my opponent evolves once again through Poe Town, Treasure Line should have, should have no problem getting a knockout. Eiju is the follow-up. Eiju is gonna be the follow-up. Yep, we're Candy Guard Chump. We might even see Triple Guard Chump here, which is actually very scary. I mean, all we need, seriously, all we need is a supporter, guys, here. All we need is a supporter. Ooh, there's a field lore. Okay, so my opponent very smartly choosing to get rid of the field lore. I assume that's what he searched for with the field lore. I mean, with the Lucario. So my opponent must already have Cynthia, right? In his hand, he discards the N. So the last card in his hand is gotta be Cynthia. Um, yeah, the last card is gonna be Cynthia. Now very smartly, yep, he evolved. This guard jump first to search, there to remove the stadium and then set up um, both guard jumps. But wow, my opponent actually uses beacon, so that's really good news for us that he didn't have a way to retreat. That is actually very, very crucial. 
Ooh, and we actually top deck the end. Okay. So do I want to evolve into Trash Challenge or do I want to hold off and try to get Garbotoxin going? That's an interesting decision here. Um, if we stop Lucario, it's not too impactful, but my opponent did already use one field lower, which is nice. Um, okay. So we will probably end up losing the Meow Stick. Um, no damage rearrangement for us. However, we do get, um, hmm, we do get extra damage spread, so I think we're just gonna win based off of that. Um, all we need right now is basically Espion EX. If we get Espion EX, we win. We get one, two, three, four knockouts with Espion EX, and then my opponent would only have one Tapu Lele on his field. Uh, we're gonna see a Choice Man, that's fine. We also have no non-GXs. We also have no non-GXs. So things are looking good. Things are looking pretty good here. Okay, hopefully with this I'll remember. After every game, if I win, I will give out two codes. If I lose, I will give out one, okay? That's gonna be the plan, at least. Please remind me, okay? Please remind me on the chat. Okay, there we see a Cynthia, but Tapu Gogo literally put, um, what, like almost 400 uh, damage on the board, which is insane. So now all we need is Ultra Ball and Energy, potentially. Um, do I gain anything by spraying again? I do get a knockout on the Lucario, which is nice. Um, do I really need another Coco? Probably not. So I want to discard these cards. Yeah, sure. If I get the Espion here, I pretty much win. And uh, there's the Energy, there's the Ultra Ball. So now we have to hope, I guess, that the Espion EX is not prized. It is not. We knew that from our first search. I did not point it out, but we knew it. And so, it's looking like we're just gonna devolve here, get four prize cards. And then I'm gonna play everything down here. Because that way I only have the Cynthia, I'm gonna draw four prizes, and there's a victory. Yeah, my opponent realizes what's about to happen, and we get the very, very solid win. So, pretty nice. Pretty nicely done there, guys. Okay. So, let's find another match. Hopefully against a Zoark variant. That's what we're looking for. We wanna go up against a Zoark variant. And seriously, the White Snake, happy birthday to you. Hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Okay. So we're looking for another opponent. We might run into Limitless Nico too. That's pretty cool. That is actually pretty cool. He would obviously be a really good opponent. Okay, we're up against Tel 4 with yet again a non Zoric deck. Um, this might be Glacian. Although it's metal, so this might be Magnuson, Octillery, Leole. We lose the coin flip, which is fine. We lose the coin flip, which is fine. We actually start Drampa, which is interesting. Um, the turn one Poton is nice. Fighting Fury Belt is interesting on the Drampa. Fighting Fury Belt on Drampa actually means um, it survives any Zoark hit, which is cool. Which is really, really cool, actually. Okay. Ooh, we're up against Metagross, actually. Metagross, Dustmain, Octillery, I would imagine. That would be my first guess. Um, there's an energy. Uh, Max Drug. Do I think Glacian with Barbarical can do something in standard? Is, is Barbarical even legal in standard? Is it legal? I don't. I think it's much weaker in standard just because. Um, sure, Glacian shuts off um, Zoark, but 
Um, Zorg is not the main attacker in any of the Zorg decks. Uh, so that's a big deal. Like in Expanded, you're shutting off abilities, which is nice. Ooh, my opponent chooses not to retreat. Okay. I think I'm gonna bench the Esper. I'm gonna attach the Fighting Fury Belt. I don't see any reason why not to do that. Uh, maybe I'll wait. Okay, I will put down... Hmm. Is there any difference between dealing 30 damage to the Veldum? To 20. 30 to... Well, I guess so. Yeah, let's go with it. Um, okay, it's Fates Collide. Okay, so... The answer is no. I don't think it's as good. Um, simply because... Ooh, should I pick Will here? I think I could pick Will here. Um, Necrozma is potentially really good. I'm gonna Ultra Wall away these two. I'm gonna set up a Trubbish. That way I have um, potential to Garbotoxin next turn. Uh, I think I'll bench the Necrozma as well, so I can maybe start attaching to it. And then I'll just... Oh, if I pick Will, I don't get to use Necrozma. Never mind. That was a bad play. Okay, that was a very silly play. Um, yeah, that was silly. Yeah, true. Uh -huh. Finding Fury Belt means um, Drumpa survives Metagross's attack. Okay, there's a Potown. I mean, there's a Field Lord to remove Potown. Uh, so, yeah, what I was saying, guys, Barber Call, it's potentially good, but sure, it stops CCs, but think about the popular Zorak decks. It's either with uh, Golisapad, so they're running Grass Energy, it's with Lycanroc, they're running um, Basic Fighting, Guardi, they're running Fairy, um, Garbodor, they're running Psychic, um, Magnuson, so they're running Metal, so it's just not very straightforward. Um, <laughs> yes, Joe Bro, exactly, that's the reason why um, I have a lot of computer issues, because the uh, PC Joe is so bad for Mac, and yeah, it sounds like a jet engine after a while, <laughs> indeed. Um, so yeah, guys, that's that's like the reasoning here. Um, using Big Wheel was such a bad idea. Um, so yeah, it's like Barbarical isn't as strong in standard, just because decks are not just running four DCs and that's it. Um, they're running different attackers. Um, Things like that. And I feel like if Glacian generally becomes a big problem for Zork, um, you can just start running a Taurus as well. Taurus is great against Glacian. It's really, really good against Glacian. Just because of how their energy attachments work. Okay, so we see double Metang and double Metagross, which is annoying to deal with. Um, I think I'm gonna actually do this and start spreading. Um, do I want to two-shot the Vault Picks? Yes, and also the Fighting Fury Belt means with the Metal Resistance, Tapu Gogo is actually two-shot by Metagross, which is really, really cool. Um, and I'm just gonna end here. Using up my Jigs, I mean, if I, if I was gonna Big Wheel, I should not have benched the Necrozma, because I did Big Wheel. Um, I just didn't need to bench the Necrozma at all. Okay. I'm gonna Ultra Ball and I will set up Carbotoxin here. Which is really nice. No Trash Lunch for now. One, two, three item cards so far. But as our Pokemon start getting knocked out, we can definitely start moving towards that direction. Um, two hit given the Vulpix is okay as well. It's generally fine. Um, I can super. I think I will super out both Tapu Lele's. The fact that my opponent used one field blower on a stadium instead of deactivating Garb is really good news for us. That should mean we're gonna have a ton of turns to just spread here. Um, David Allen, hello, thanks so much for being here. And Sector, I did talk a little bit about Costa Mesa Regionals in terms of how I did. Um, I didn't talk about the results or anything. I'll probably end up making a video analyzing the deck lists and stuff. Um, like the winner and then the fringe decks that uh, appeared, the top 8 decks, etc. Um, I should be doing something like that. 
uh, but I haven't gone over the results just yet. I haven't gone over those results just yet. Um, I just mentioned a little bit about how I did, etc. Okay, so we see a Kuzma, yep, onto the Necrozma, onto the wrongly promoted Necrozma. And now we need a DC to retreat it. But it seems like my opponent, unless he has Field Lore as one of the two cards in his hand, um, should be okay here. All we need is to find another Floatstone or a DC to retreat. Yeah, the more I think about it, like, no Guzma. I don't know how much I like that in this deck. Okay, so we see a Psychic. The Psychic, I'm gonna attach to the Necrozma, just in case I need to manually retreat. Um, I'm just gonna Sycamore here. Okay, so we find everything. The Floatstone and the DCE. So I'm gonna use the Floatstone for now. I have a ton of tool cards still. Okay, do I want a Poe Town? Yeah, in case I get extra damage on that Maragross. And then we'll just Flying Flip. And as I mentioned, Tapu Go Go resists Metal, so 150 minus 20, that's 130. So Tapu Go Go is actually two shot by Metagross, which is really, really nice. Really, really nice. Oh, I won the game and I didn't give out a code. You guys didn't remind me. Okay, so there's a... The GX attack, which is nice, unless my opponent does it. Here you go, guys. Two upside down codes that was not on purpose. One is the Rockruff promo code. Um, I didn't realize this was in here. Um, my opponent, in the meantime, is using um, Algorithm GX to search for five cards. So, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much. We're celebrating one year of full time Table Mon. <laughs> full time Pokemon Table Mon. Something like that. <laughs> um, and huge shout out to our sponsors as well. Ultimate Guard, Sagar Scoop, and Tabletop Village. You guys are awesome. Um, if you're watching this and you're interested in some sort of sponsorship on the channel, um, for your logo to appear down here, uh, you can get in contact with me very easily. I would like to think so. And so, my opponent just used N. I would assume he went for something like um, field blower. I'm sure my opponent plays more than one field blower. Uh, thank you for the follow. But I feel like all we need to do is just keep spreading here. Just spread, spread, spread. We have the end to deny the algorithm, which is nice. Nick Twitch, thanks so much for following as well. And yeah, we're in a pretty okay position, I would say. We have the choice band in case um, my opponent tries to deny um, deny something uh, we're just getting a ton a ton of damage on uh, my opponents Pokemon CMX potion that's fine he's also using up a lot of item cards one two three four five well not a lot it's five um, get more damage on the Merigros Ooh, my opponent does get the field blower okay so now we have to be very careful now we have to be extremely careful but as you can see my opponent made two mistakes here. He evolved the Metagross before removing the Potown, and then in his tilt, <laughs> he removed the Potown and the Floatstone on the Garb in order to have abilities and not have any more damage, but he did not remove the Fighting Fury Belt of the Tapu Koko. So he's going to be put on tilt once again after he realizes about Tapu Koko's um, resistance. <laughs> Uh, Professor Pencham, you got the Rockruff, that's so cool. <laughs> Congrats on getting the Rockruff. Oh, okay, my opponent is actually like, I'm just not gonna deal with the carp. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a knockout here. That's okay. Um, this Mergros has 60 on it, this one has 90. So, unfortunately, we can't take the double knockout. We could knock out an Octillery and one of the Metagross. Ooh, my opponent is. This all his abilities here. Interesting. That was a peculiar use of abilities. Uh, but that's fine. The guard goes down. We have another one to potentially immediately replace it. Um, there's no way we stop abilities this turn. I feel like that's okay. Um, I will just pull down here. And then... Who do I attach energy to even? Mm, maybe Trampa? 
No. I think I'm going to touch energy here. And then we'll just spread again. That's fine. And then next turn, if my opponent... I mean, it seems like my opponent will simply not be taking a knockout, which is cool. Um, the turn after, we're going to get rid of Octillery, which should limit my opponent quite a bit. Um, he's going to attack us with a clean Metagross. But seriously, this is really okay. Um, two field blowers down, and Tabu Goku will survive this turn, potentially. Um, White Snake, you're planning on doing laundry? <laughs> And you will meekly watch the stream. <laughs> That's cool. So no plans, but I assume you're gonna be celebrating on the weekend then. I hope. Okay, and we see an end. That's fine. The end is completely, completely fine here. Okay, we get an end. We get a TC. We get a choice band. Choice band could be decent on the other Coco. After this one gets attacked, uh, we're gonna see a heavy ball. Metang? No, Metagross. Okay. Are we gonna see a rare candy Metagross? That would be interesting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 item cards for my opponent so far. And there's the Giga Hammer, but thankfully Tapu Goku survives, which is really, really cool. Now, we are going to attach this choice band here, I'm gonna attach to the Trubbish and I'm going to N. Any Ultra Ball or the Garbotoxin Garb means we shot off abilities. We don't. Uh, I was really hoping to shot off both Metagross and Octillery here. Uh, but we get another turn of spread, which is really cool. I'll evolve into the Meow Stick for now. Um, I hit myself for 30 damage, that's completely fine. I'm gonna take another prize card here that does remove damage off the board. Uh, but that means no more Octillery ability. That means no more Octillery for an ability, which is nice. And we got another Fighting Fury Belt of our prize cards, so that Tapu Goku gets another turn of, um, of spreading. And now, uh, that last spot, after this Tapu Goku goes down, that spot will be used for Travish, because Trash Challenge is actually dealing an immense, immense amount of damage at this point in time. We see the Remorade back down immediately. Two Field Blowers for now. No Dust Mane is actually very interesting. No Dust Mane Necrozma for now is very interesting. Oh, that's really cool, the White Snake. <laughs> that's really cool. Hope you have fun over the weekend. Okay. So there's a knockout finally for my opponent on that Tapu Goku that dealt just so much damage. So much damage. Okay. So, okay. So we can take a knockout with Metagross. And then, I mean with Garb, and then we lose the Garb. If we get two consecutive attacks with Garb, that would actually be okay. Um... Okay, so let's try that, yeah? We're not gonna worry too much about stopping abilities. The damage obviously doesn't matter. And Rahul, thank you so much for subscribing. That's so kind of you. Welcome to the chat and the stream. Thank you so much for subscribing with Amazon Prime. Thank you so, so much. Okay. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna take a knockout with... Oh, Ninko, thank you so much for the host. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. Huge shout out to Limitless Nico, guys. If you're not following him, um, I would seriously, seriously recommend you too. Um, he's a great player from Europe. Um, currently ranked at the top of the ranking, I believe. Not at the very top, but like within the top five spots. So, yeah, if you guys want to see some high level play um, from him as well. I definitely recommend you guys follow him. Thanks so much, Nico. Okay, so this is the plan. I do 150 to this Metagross, and then I just trash a lunch for game on whatever other Metagross comes up. So yeah, um, this time around, no damage rearrangement. We could also, re I guess, oh, could I have won this turn? I think I could have won this turn, actually. <laughs> Third bandage, yeah, high level play, of course. 
Um, high level Greninja play, I guess. Uh, um, could I have won with Meowstic? I had a hundred, two forty, two ninety. Um, I had three hundred and thirty damage. No, I could not have won um, the previous turn. But I'm gonna win next turn. There's the end. So just take a look at my opponent's um, discard pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13 item cards. That's 260 damage. So we never ended it back. So that's 260 damage minus resistance. That's 240. Even if my opponent used a field blower to remove my choice band um, and completely healed, that would require item usage. So Trash Alliance just cleans up from here. Trash Alliance just cleans, cleans up. <laughs> So why are you saying uh, Nico is not high level play guy? Did I miss something in his stream? And there's a victory, yeah. Um, so pretty straightforward game, guys. Um, we just spread, spread, spread. Our non-GX attackers were really cool. And yeah, okay. So let's try and face off against a Zorak deck. Otherwise, um, this will be the last game with this deck. But in the meantime, guys... Two new codes for you guys, um, upside down, so that they're harder to get and harder to figure out, I guess. Um, thank you so much for being here. It's one year of Table One. Always looking, trying, always looking to improve and whatnot. Um, so thank you guys so much for everything. <laughs> We're just teasing Nico and Rail. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you at Costa Mesa, and yeah back into the match guys and so yeah as part of uh, our continuous improvement guys we're looking into a new computer if you have a chance to check out gofundme.com slash tableman um any help is appreciated and like even just sharing the sharing the link um helps a ton guys it really does so yeah we get a mulligan here is that our second mulligan i believe um aqua patch Okay, Aqua Patch and Rare Candy. What is this deck? What plays Aqua Patch and Rare Candy? I have no idea what plays Aqua Patch and Rare Candy, guys. I generally have no idea what plays Aqua Patch and Rare Candy. I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> what plays Aqua Patch? Oh, Penguins. Yeah, Empoleon. That's right. That's right. Okay, so you guys were just teasing Nico. Understandable. Okay, so when we what well, yeah, when we get the Coco TC start, we just really want our opponent to get the turn one Bridget. That's always good. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys so so much for being here, for the support, for everything. I really wouldn't have been able to do um, what I do right now if it weren't for you guys. So thank you, thank you so so much. Um, wow, the white snake! There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the gift subscription to Limitless Nico. Thank you so so much. Ooh, this is actually not Empoleon, guys. This is Kingdra. We are up against a Kingdra deck. <laughs> the white snake. Thank you so much. We are up against a Kingdra deck, guys. Have you ever played against a Kingdra deck? I don't think I've ever played against it. Nor have I tried it out. Definitely haven't tried it out myself. Definitely haven't tried it out myself. Okay, so we got the turn one N. Um, make love for turtle. Thank you so much for the cheers. That's so kind of you. Um, thank you so so much. That's very kind of you. Birthday. <laughs> and so thank you so much for subscribing. Wow. Thank you so much. That's three months of subscription. Thank you so so much. Wow. You guys are keeping the doing a lot of things. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. The hype is real. 
Uh, TFV, what do you think about Zora and Gardevoir? I do think it's pretty good in the metagame still. Um, it's just a little less consistent, usually, but I do think it's very good. Um, snipe damage versus snipe damage indeed. <laughs> Limitless, Nico, now that you have a subscription, you have to use the table mon emojis. That's the whole point of the subscription. Don't use the old boring ones. Um, how was Costa Mesa and so? It was actually really bad for me. Uh, it was definitely not... Um, it didn't go as well as we would have liked. Okay. Um, it was actually my worst performance this season. Yeah, we got a sub train rolling. There we go, Limitless Nico. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm torn here. Do I try to get a DCE and just Ultra Ball for... Um, and just Ultra Ball, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna Ultra Ball for a Trubbish, and then maybe Ultra Ball for another Trubbish. My opponent will not be playing many GXs, and it doesn't seem like he has too many ability based Pokemon. As far as I can remember, ooh, the Esper is priced. Um, as far as I can remember, Kingdra doesn't have an ability. So, like, if I used Bridget, all I would do would be, I would have an extra basic, and I would have had, um, one energy attached somewhere. Um, definitely the Poton is really good here as well. And then I guess I'll attach the energy to the Coco. And then next turn we can Ultra Wall Lele, etc. Oof, if we had gotten the DC there, that would have been amazing. Now we want my opponent not to have... Field lower, which I would reckon he doesn't run in this deck, but we also need him to not have the Brooklet heal. And the multiple Vulpix probably means um, the non GX Alolan Ninetales as well. Um, you should have played Chalk Luck, <laughs> maybe, maybe I should have played Chalk Luck. I played Trampa Garp, which is the deck that won, so my deck decision was definitely not bad. And most of my games were pretty quirky. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, do you think Espion Garb is good in the metagame, Felipe? I do think so. Um, but a lot depends on the field lore counts of people. Oh, we do have the GX Alola Ninetales. A lot depends on the on the counts of people. Ooh, that's perfect. Okay. If they're running um, between, like, if they're running three field lowers, then not really. So if they're run only running like one or two, then that's when Garp becomes really, really strong. And Vinicius, <laughs> thank you so much for the Twitch Prime subscription. You too, thank you so much. We definitely have a, a subscriber train rolling. Thank you guys so, so much. And I hope the stream is cooperating as well. Thank you so, so much. Okay, so I guess we just spread here. We're just gonna start spreading. Um, the GX attack from Ninetales could worry me a little bit, it's not going to be that big a deal. Um, I don't see too much synergy between Kingdra and Ninetales. Um, there's a Seedra, there's a Ninetales. We get extra damage on the board. I'm happy. Um, nothing's really threatening us too much. Energy on the Ninetales. And Sycamore means unless my opponent finds a Floatstone, we will be good here. <laughs> Thank you so much, TFV Vinicius. Julie, <laughs> that's a peculiar name. Thank you guys, seriously. Thank you guys so so much. People make fun of me in the in the comments of the videos um, of how much I say thank you, but there's just not enough thank yous to to go around. Okay, so do we want ability lock? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I give my I'll give myself the option, I guess, and then I'll just end here. Uh, my opponent did go for two King Trust, so maybe he already had the rare candy. Um, by evolving into the Carbotoxin Carb, that means my opponent doesn't get to keep the energy on these guys, doesn't get a free retreater going. I guess we can go ahead and do that. And then one, two, three, only three item cards, that's fine. We're gonna draw a price card here. We're looking for the Esper, although odds are not very good that we will get it. Um, the Garbotoxin prevents an Aqua Patch attachment and knockout on the Coco, which is nice. Well, it doesn't prevent that, but it does prevent um, my opponent conserving the energy on the Horsey, I guess. 
So there's a Poe Town um, getting discarded by the Brooklet Heal. And there we see a Water. And there we see the Aqua Patch. So it's almost as if I can predict what's going to happen. Almost. Hmm. Okay, so next turn will be interesting. I have a choice on whether... If my opponent doesn't evolve this Seedra into Kingdra, I can devolve to get two prizes. One on Kingdra and one on um, the Ninetales. Oh wow, does this have free retreat? Uh, no, it doesn't, okay. This attack does 90 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon that has damage counters on it. So is my opponent just gonna actively target the Garb? That would be pretty impressive if he does that. Um, I would be okay with that though, I think. I would generally be okay with that. Because then I just spread again. Then I just spread and I get a knockout on the horsey. I set up these three guys for a knockout. Basically just leaving my opponent with one mana fee. I think if my opponent's last card in hand is something like Lele, he might be tempted to do so. Here we see the Vulpix, and there we're gonna see the Tornado Shot on the active. And he discards a water and deals 30 to the Coco. Okay, that was not what I expected. Okay, I'm gonna Ultra Ball away this and this and I'm gonna grab I mean I could generally devolve no I think I'm gonna spread once more and then I'll devolve so what am I grabbing here uh, the Necrozma could be decent just getting an energy on the Necrozma could be good but the Night Tails is scary I think I'll just well what do I even get here I'm gonna ask one card in hand. I think I can't go the Necrozma. He, I mean, if he has Kuzma Choice Band, so be it. Or Counter Catcher Choice Band. <laughs> and then I will put back the Esper, I mean, the Meow Stick. Uh, almost predict or pre recorded stream Sir Pandage. <laughs> the conspiracy theories. Yeah, the conspiracy. Theories are real, aren't they? <laughs> so did I predict that someone would say almost predict or pre-recorded stream? We'll never know, I guess. Okay, so attachment there. Um, my hand is now not so great. Poton would have been really nice. We're gonna get another prize card here. We do get the Espion. So next turn we can potentially draw three prizes. On the active, on the bench king draw, and then on the nine tails. Two cards in my opponent's hand. Does he have Guzma Water? No, we see an N. That's fine. Maybe I should have benched the Espion. Maybe that was playing too careful. But I think it's fine. Uh, there's the Meow Stick, the pesky Meow Stick. We get Cynthia's. So yeah, now the plan is Espion. Maybe I should have benched the Espion. Following the same logic as the benching the Necrozma. Following the same logic. Maybe it was better even to bench the Espion instead of the Necrozma. I don't know, the, the Necrozma guarantees the last two prizes on the uh, mana fee. It's also a decent attacker. Okay, so there's the Tornado Shot. We're gonna see 30. To someone else, probably the same Coco. No, the Trubbish. Okay, and we see the energy discard. So so much effort for just one prize card. This is definitely not the most competitive match, though. Okay, so we get the Poe Town. Just playing it to thin my hand, and then we're gonna Cynthia here. Are we gonna get? Okay, no. Ooh, we didn't even get any energy. That's actually really sad here. Okay, I'm gonna put back all three energy. This was actually a very, very sad turn. And then I'll bench the other Coco, I'll retreat into it, and I'll just pass. Next turn, we just take a more, and like this just delayed what we were trying to do for one turn. 
just delayed it by one turn, but it's not a big deal, guys. It's not a big deal. Okay. Is the stream working well, guys? Is it stuttering? Is it any issues? Any, any issues? I hope not. <laughs> Make love, no war turtle. <laughs> That's a pretty cool name. Okay, I guess my opponent, by placing the damage on the bench, he can now use Brine in order to just take more knockouts, potentially. Nope, just my opponent insists on the tornado shots. He has nine cards left. How does he manage that? Okay, how many item cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine item cards. Okay, I'm generally just gonna stick over here. And there we go. So we're gonna get Despian. We're gonna attach there. We're gonna retreat into Despian. And then I feel like I should attach all of my tool cards just to make my deck thinner just in case next turn all I need to do is attach the DC to the Necrozma and we deal a hundred damage to the mana fee so there's a prize on the horsey there's a prize on the Seedra and there's a prize on the Vulpix so triple prizes for us there's one So that was checking on the active. Yeah, now my opponent promotes the Vulpix. We get a knockout for the Horsey, or the Seedra rather. And then we get a knockout for the Choice Band. I mean, for the Vulpix, sorry. <laughs> not for the Choice Band. We did not knock out a Choice Band. So yeah, it looks like two more codes coming your way, guys. Two more codes coming your way. Okay. So there's a nine tails, that's fine. Even Trash Alange gets a knockout here. Even Trash Alange just outright gets the knockout. <laughs> My opponent uses Cyrus, so I'm gonna shuffle back the Coco. Oh no, those were the ones I wanted to. Uh, I thought I was choosing which ones I wanted to shuffle in. Ugh. <laughs> well, that was bad. Oh, I had to pick two to keep and then... Oh, gosh. That was... <laughs> that was silly, guys. That was actually very silly. I just extended this for no reason. Okay, so then I'll just keep spreading until I knock out that mana fee. <laughs> that was a huge fail. <laughs> that was the pro strat, guys. That was the pro strat. That was me switching to automatic pilot. Yeah, this has happened to almost everyone. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Best sires ever. <laughs> yep, it's just... Oh, what threatens my opponent? Nope. That should go back into the deck. <laughs> Oopsies. Uh, does my opponent even have any energy left? He has 7 water and 1 DC. I assume he has more than 1 DC in his deck, right? Okay, so now we win. Now we win by devolving the... <laughs> the Nine Tails. <laughs> Indian Avenue, actually Acer OLED. And yeah, Cyrus is dumb. I, I, that was very silly. <laughs> okay, but there we go. We gotta win. So here's two more codes for you guys. One upside down, one not so upside down. Both burning shadows. So yeah, guys, seriously. Thank you so, so much for everything. It's very kind of you. Um, hope you get some good luck with the codes. And I turn here because I have another screen with the chat and then here's uh, here's me and the game and everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, next deck coming up is gonna be, um, I guess, Metal Carpenter. We're gonna go with that, okay? So don't go anywhere, guys. I will be right back.